In tonight's lesson, we'll be finishing up our introduction to exponential notation. I want you to be very cautious because there are times students struggle with this. I need for you to know the expression negative 4 in parentheses, that base of negative 4 raised to the second power, is not the same as the expression negative with the base of 4 raised to the second power. These are very different expressions. They are not the same, and that's very important to know. Let's talk about why. We've worked with a base of negative 4 raised to the second power for a few nights now. Negative 4 raised to the second power we know is just negative 4 times negative 4. Negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 4 is 16. So negative 4, that base raised to the second power, is a positive 16 because it just means we're going to take negative 4, multiply it by itself two times. The second expression here, negative and then 4 to the second power, because there are no parentheses, the 2, that exponent of 2, is only attached to the 4. It means negative times 4 to the second power. A negative what? Well, you can assume it's a negative 1. So it means negative 1 times 4 to the second power. It's a very different expression. Based on our order of operations, we need to take care of the exponent, 4 to the second power, before we ever multiply by this negative 1. So therefore, 4 to the second power is 4 times 4, or 16. So now we have negative 1 times 16, which is a negative 16. So negative times 4 to the second power ends up being a negative 16. These are actually very different expressions. They mean very different things. One of them ends up being positive, the other ends up being negative, and that's an important distinction. I'd like you to take a look at your first example on your own. I want to know what's the difference between negative times 2 to the third power and negative base of 2, a negative 2 base, that whole base raised to the third power. They are actually different. They mean different things. So I'd like you to discuss what they each mean. Then I'd like you to simplify each and compare their answers. So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. Hopefully you pause the video. Our negative times 2 to the third means negative 1 times 2 to the third. That means negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2. And we know 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So that's negative 1 times 8 or a negative 8. So negative times 2 to the third power is negative 8. Negative, a base of negative 2 raised to the third power actually means something different. It means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And you'll remember from last night I love to pair up pairs of negative factors. Negative times a negative is a positive, 2 times 2 is 4, but I still have this extra factor of negative 2 trailing along. Positive times a negative is a negative, 4 times 2 is 8. So this expression, negative 2 in parentheses raised to the third power, actually also happens to be a negative 8. But it's important for you to know, even though you come up with the same result in the end, the meaning of each is very different. These expressions are actually different expressions. They mean something different. There's times we come up with the same answer in mathematics, but not for the same reason. So yes, they both end up being equivalent to negative 8, but for very different reasons, and that's important to realize. Let's try another one. Josie says that negative 15 times itself 6 times is the same as negative times 15 to the 6th. Is she correct, and how do you know? So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, and come on back. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. First of all, you need to remember that negative 15 times itself six times just means a base of negative 15 raised to the sixth power. And what does that mean? That means negative 15 times 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 negative 15. 
I'm not going to figure out an actual numerical value, but what I am going to do is I'm going to look at my pairs of negative factors. If my exponent is even, I'm going to make an exponent, an even exponent of 6 allows for three beautiful pairs of negative factors. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times positive times positive is a positive. So the whole point of that was to show you that this expression will be a positive answer. So if these two expressions are going to be the same thing, I sure hope the second expression is a positive answer also. So let's take a look at that second expression. Negative times 15 to the 6th means negative 1 times, that should say 15 to the 6th. And so what that means is negative 1 times 15 times 15 times 15 times 15 times 15 times 15. Now... I'm not going to figure out the numerical value, but when I multiply all these positive 15s together, I'm going to get a positive answer. When I multiply that by this factor of negative 1 trailing along, a negative times a positive is a negative. So I've just realized that this expression is actually going to have a negative answer. Well, if one of the answers is positive and the other is negative, they certainly are not equal. Positives and negatives do not equal one another. They are very different. So our first expression really means negative 15 to the 6th, and that is not the same as negative times 15 to the 6th. One of the answers will be positive and the other answer will be negative. And that's how you know. You show the mathematics and then you explain one answer will be positive, the other's negative. They don't have a shot at being equivalent. I'd like you to go ahead and take a look at this. Tim wrote 16 as a base of negative 2 to the fourth power. Is he correct? Take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. Well, all I would do is I would simplify negative 2 in parentheses to the fourth power. I have to tell you already, because I have a negative base raised to an even power, if you have a negative base raised to an even power, I know that answer is guaranteed to be positive. We discussed that last night. So. Hopefully, it's going to end up being a positive 16. I already know in my mind the answer is going to be positive. The question is, will it be a positive 16? So let's take a look at this. I'm just going to pair up my factors. I love to group negative factors in pairs because negative times a negative is a positive. So 2 times 2 is 4. Negative times a negative is positive. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. He is completely correct. Yes, he is, and I know that he is because I took my second expression, I simplified it, and showed that it, in the end, it truly equaled the first expression. So you could totally write it out that way. Let's try another example. I want to know, could negative 2 be used as a base to rewrite 32, a positive 32? Is there a way that we can start with negative 2 as a base, raised to some exponent and end up with a positive 32? That's the question. And then could negative 2 be used as a base to rewrite a positive 64? So the second question is, can negative 2 as a base raised to some exponent translate into a positive 64? What I need you to do is I need you to take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. Okay, so... Obviously, my negative 2s have already popped up. So negative 2, I'm going to say to the fifth power. Negative 2 to the fifth power. And I'm going to wonder whether or not that's a positive 32. And the reason for that is this. I know that 2 to the fifth power is 32. So I'm hoping negative 2 to the fifth power is also 32. So what I do is I take a look at my pairs of factors. Negative 2 times negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2, and then I have this extra factor of negative 2 running around. Negative times negative is positive, 2 times 2 is 4. Negative times negative is positive, 2 times 2 is 4. 
I got my extra factor of negative 2 running around at the end. 4 times 4 is 16 times negative 2. Oh, no, that's going to be a negative 32. I already knew that would happen. And why did I know that would, would happen? When you start with a negative base, and you're raising that negative base to an odd exponent, and the only exponent that had a shot of working was 5, you know your answer will be negative. Your result will be negative. So you don't have a shot at coming up with a positive 32. Negative 2 as a base could be used to rewrite a negative 32, but that's not what they ask. They ask us to rewrite it as a positive 32. So for the next one, I'm hopeful I can take negative 2 as a base and rewrite it to an even exponent because then I'll be able to come up with a positive 64. Let's take a look. I know that 2 to the 6th is 64. So I'm hoping negative 2 to the 6th is also 64. And so I pair up my factors. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. I can tell you my answer is going to be positive. Oops, I'm jumping slides. Sorry about that. My answer is going to be positive. I sure hope it's a positive 64. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is, yay, 64. So yes, absolutely this can happen. And the reason is because when you have a negative base, raised to then an even exponent, we discussed that last night, then you know you come up with a positive answer. And what exponent do we use? We use a 6. Okay, here are your reflection questions to write up and be ready to share in class tomorrow. We'll pull a card, that person will come up and just we'll see what they came up with. It says, why should we bother with exponential notation? Why not just write out all the multiplications? Why do we care that two, to write 2 to the 10th power instead of writing out 2 times 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 2 10 times? Why? Why bother? Is it necessary? I'm not sure. You discuss why. And also, I'd like you to name where exponential notation is useful in the real world. It's very important to me that what we study in math class actually has a use out in the real world in actual jobs. Because if not, then why are we teaching it in schools? We have to teach you lots and lots of different types of mathematics because we don't know what career you will go into. But if no career ever needs exponential notation, why in the world would we think to teach it? So I want you to try to write out as many examples as you can of where exponential notation is useful in the real world. If you have a hard time coming up with examples, I have put a link that you can go to to help you figure that out. You just make sure you scroll down on the page. There's lots of examples. Take care. Have a good night. See you.